What's going on, everybody? Extreme Card Breaks. It is Marvelous Monday, Magnificent Monday, whatever you want to call it out there. Got some uh, questions that came in over the week, so I figured we'll do a video up on it because, you know, some of the stuff I touched up about before and everything, but I uh, figured we'd hit it up. Uh, let's see. Three card screen on myslabs.com. You guys know BST uh, Sports Cards coming out, uh, I think he said 5 p.m. on the 31st. Uh, if you check out his Facebook business page, there's a link to a podcast he just did. Very, very informative on the website. Check it out. All right. So let me pull up the first one here. There we go. Boom. Did you see more BGS fakes are found? Is Becca doing anything about this? I believe this came from Instagram uh, from Dan M. So, yeah, I did see it. And you're going to keep seeing them pop up. Um... Gosh, I can't remember what the, the Instagram name is of the people or guy or people that are looking into the found this stuff originally. I know Zach came in at DC Sports, did find uh, Lucas Silver in one. He snapped it out of the case and everything. You know, it's good to know what's going on out there, especially with fakes. Because trust me, this stuff here with uh, slabs, no matter what grading company you are, has been going on for a very, very long time. I'm talking probably decades so when people are acting like this is just something new, no, it's people have gotten even more creative to redesign to make it even look more authentic. So, um, yeah, I do know that there were more fakes found. It was a Jordan, I think it was a Jordan rookie card and something else. And I mean, Jordan is probably one of the that Jordan rookie is one of the most sought after rookie cards there are out there on the market. So yeah, I I, I can see that being always one too. The Lucas Silvers, yeah. So what they're let me show you guys just in case you don't know what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to pull up on my cloth behind here. See if I can get this up. Now it's going to be hard to see. Well, anyhow, there's a serial number to the bottom of this. And basically what it is, is you got to look at real good. And between, you'll start off PAT, there's a dot, then your numbers. The dot's missing. That's where people are catching it, but I'm going to tell you, they're going to get more creative now onto it. And they'll start putting dots in there next. So, what I've always done through the years is I basically is, if I know somebody grades, and I know they send them in to get graded, and I never have a worry about it, because I know... It's going from the gritty company to them to me. It's all these other cards that are flip-flopping hands through the years. But you never know who the true owner was of the card that got graded back. Brad, you can sit there, forge labels, get all creative. I mean, the, the originals, if I do recall right... Oh, crud, I forgot I had this still up there. I put it back up, my bad. On the Beckett labels, they were a little bit more, like, rigidy onto it, and the font was different, too. So if you've ever sent one in yourself, like this here I had sent in myself, I would compare it to it offhand if I was even sketchy about it. My best of our opinion on it is if you see something don't look right, don't buy it. You know, that's the easiest way on to it. Don't look right, don't buy it. I only buy from people that I know that do the grading themselves normally. Uh, there are times where I buy into rises and, you know, you take a chance at it. You never know down the line but all my personal pc cards were either bought from somebody who directly was sending the psa or i have sent them same with beckett um i don't think beckett's really doing much about it to be honest dan they are aware of it i know people reached out to them they haven't ever responded back to them you know uh beckett shut down right now maybe that's something they're looking into during this shutdown for COVID. i i have no idea offhand um you know, a lot of people are talking about BGS prices pummeled because of this. Yeah, they're always going to happen. There's going to be a little span to where people go BGS over PSA back and forth. It happens through the years. Don't get caught up with people trying to be influencers on here, you know, on to saying that and stuff like that. Because regardless, everybody's going to have their own thing. I mean, look at the PSA fakes that were earlier this year and last year. And look how big PSA got after it. Right now, PSA is getting more draw because their turnaround time is quicker in BGS, and the prices, you know, for the smaller cards are more reasonable for a turnaround time. There's there's a reason behind it. Just never believe in the hype of what people say on a lot of stuff. Do your own research, as I always say. At the same time, if it don't look right, don't buy it. 
Easiest way around it. All right, let me move to next on question here. Ricky, yeah, this was an email. All right. I remember this was a direct email because uh, I told him I'm going to respond back to this in the video, and he was cool with it, me using first name and last initial. So why are so many breakers now not keeping the product on the screen? The older guys seem to do this, though. Okay, th this was, I'm mean, not lying, when I got this, I've actually had a few emails on this probably over the past two months. Um, and the reason behind it is, so everybody wants to be a breaker out there. Every single person. People have been doing it for five plus years, know what it was like to scratch and beg and get your stuff filled all the time. And, you know, where there was not a big, huge profit margin on a lot of the stuff. And anybody who's breaking back in 13, 14, 15, 16, they'll tell you about it. You never broke retail product. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's out there raiding Walmarts and Targets so they can break on every platform there is. So, my first thing to you is break with somebody that's reputable. Just don't go in there and you see five or six people blowing up the chat. They might be 10 year olds in there, to be honest. But here's because he gave me a two part. No, the next person gave me a two part question. I'm sorry. All right. So, what I'm going to say now is if you have a break, the product should be in front of you. You should open the product in front of you. I got it. There are certain times to where you do one of them huge leaf memorabilia boxes and you got to angle cameras and everything. One of the exceptions to it. I mean, you're, it's going to be a little bit harder to do, but you're going to do the best you can onto it. That's why I have two cameras. Main camera, top camera. You always get to see my products in front of me. If people are taking packs off the screen, that is wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. If they're going through their cards and they're going... Oh, sorry, guys. Let me give you an example here if there we go wrong screen so i brought these out because they were on top of some so if i'm sitting doing a break and i'm going like this then all of a sudden i'm like oh look it's owen miller boom you know and i go like this to take this card off the screen my hand is like that and comes back that is wrong because you just took a product off the screen and now somebody could come after you, and even though you're not scamming them, you just drew all kind of red flags on yourself, your business, and everything else. So my easy thing onto it is people are not knowledgeable. I can sit there and tell breakers over and over again, everybody get into it, what to do right. They're still going to do what they want to do. Break with who you trust and who you see out there doing it legit. I mean, there's always going to be folks and problems. There's going to be times where your power internet goes off for the breaker. It happened to me like three, four years ago when I was only like maybe a year into it. Uh, short story is it was an eBay break. I literally grabbed my phone, started recording, stuck it up here, and had to wait for it populated back up. And I mean, I was in the middle of breaking like the packs and everything. Granted, I was lucky a lot of the guys, you know, had some trust to build in there with me, and I felt bad. I even gave a card out at the end. Now, luckily with mine, I think it was like two autos per box, and I already pulled both autos, so it kind of, you know, helped build the trust and everything onto it. But I also showed them that I was going to place the video from my cell phone, which, you know, had the uh, stuff onto it as well, too, because literally, you know, I had it posted at my other screen, showing everything as well too at a date and time but like i said if they're not keeping product on the screen move on there's a million breakers out there nowadays find guys you could trust and you feel good about you know that, that's the best thing i could tell you off him man uh they're, they're inexperienced or they're just ignorant you're one of the two and if people have told you about it they go straight to being ignorant to be honest man um Look for the older people out there. And it's going to go on another question a guy asked to remain anonymous from. So let's flip into these here. Oops, sorry guys. I forgot to have on the screen. Why are people just tossing out prices on cars when selling? Too many people seem not to be doing their own research. That is correct. You're just throwing out prices. It's one thing because of like certain markets just jumping so much overnight. And you don't want to lose out in a pro on a thing of it. But if I had like a 1989 Fleer Ken Griffey Jr. PSA 9, and I didn't know the price, I'm going to look it up and then I'm going to make my price based off of that. I'm going to use the average sales. If somebody's just going out there and not doing it, then I don't know what to tell you guys. 
from them, go somewhere else. It, it, that's the best thing to do. There's so many people out there now doing either sales, auctions, breaks, whatever it may be. Move on. Don't give them the time on the streams and just move on. Find somebody else that you're going to be comfortable with to do it and just roll. But you, it is, I see it across the board. People are just throwing out prices and they, and they don't know how to price. And you know, eventually you get a bad rep out of that stuff because people will start checking eBay uh, sales and they'll be like, okay, yeah, he might be off on that one, two, three. And you start hitting like 10 cards. Just move on, guys. It's the easiest way. And this came from the same person being anonymous. Can you recommend some good, reliable breakers? Um, I can. And I don't like really just throwing guys' names out there that much. And there, there's a lot of good breakers out there. I don't even know them all. But if I was to break with somebody, and like back in the day, I broke with very, very few people because I didn't like people's mentality, their shipping methods. I'm very, very particular with what I do. So back in the day, probably like four, 2013, 14, 15-ish time frame, I broke with Bates on Nasty Breaks. Some people know him as Bateson. He's no longer a breaker. G1, because I, if I ever would have an issue, I would never have to worry about it. And Platinum Card Break. Those three there are my originals. I broke with a lot of people. I give everybody a chance. And, you know, you just you start learning the more you go around and around. You want to go find break, people that are doing breakers you can't find them on YouTube? Tell you what, go to breakers.tv. Make an account. You'll probably, on a Friday, Saturday night, you'll probably have like 30 dudes on there. And then you can find them on our YouTube channels where they're talking to everybody at. And see who you like out of them all. Um, honestly, if currently, the only people I break with, the Monster Den with Jacob. Um, no, it's not just because I do my breaks in there every so often. It's because, I, you know, I trust him. He has very good pricing. He ships every two days. I don't have to wait a week or two weeks for somebody to ship out my break stuff. You know, I never have to worry about it. Um, Platinum Car Breaks, another good one if you want to get into high-end stuff. I know some people don't like them. I, I recommend if you want to get into high-end stuff. Uh, G1 Cards with him. You got DC Sports, Zach Kamen. He's just on Facebook, I do believe. So if you look up DC Sports, he also does consignments. Uh, occasionally, I'll get in one of his. I don't get a lot of breaks anymore, just so everybody knows. Hockey, I'll do top notch or top notch Phoenix breaks just because I know I can get the Penguins in there. Um, he's out of Arizona. I'm trying to think, uh, if you're really into wanting to some fast fill breaks, um, real breaks, they're just a Facebook group, but they snap fill in like five seconds. No joke. There's no fillers on that. But th that's pretty much all I have to break with. I know there's a lot of people out there that are breakers, and I'm probably forgetting them, but it's just because I don't, you know, go out and do getting a lot of breaks anymore. So I do apologize by it. But th those there are my go-to offhand if I want to get into a break or I want to get in something. Zach Kamen does a lot of lower-end mixers. Um, Jacob uh, will do mixers. His new release stuff is very well-priced. Uh, th th I'm trying to think here. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you're looking for some, that's who I use offhand. You know, look at your Facebook group, DC Sports, the Monster Den. Um, you'll see myself and Jacob in there. Jacob does all the breaking, though. I just, I'm like a tag along for, you know, whenever I get cases and stuff that I can break. Uh, Platinum Car Breaks, both YouTube, Breakers TV, G1, Breakers TV, and YouTube. And like I said, uh, Real Breaks, big, huge group there. They're only on Facebook. But uh, take a look at those guys there if you're looking for getting some breaks. It's ship quick, have good customer service. Plus, DC also does uh, consignments. All right, final question because I just realized I'm coming up on 15 minutes. See, I just start going on and on and on here. This one I thought was funny. I, I already responded back to him, but I asked him if, I, if it was cool if I put this up there. And he said, yeah, go for it. Will you bring back throw Throwback Thursday, please? You know, I really loved my Throwback Thursday. It was a fun video to do, especially when we, like, probably broke the record on opening 89 Don Russ packs in one night. That was awesome for anybody that actually stood with me for, like, three hours of live streaming. Um, that, that was great. Uh, I'll think about because here's the catch is that Throwback Thursday used to be cheap and affordable. 
and now it's just as expensive as new stuff. I do have stuff here, but it's just one of those things where I probably really would kick myself in the butt to open it and just pull that card out that's really uncentered from the 80s or 90s, whatever it may be, where the box value is more. But I'll think about maybe doing one once a month or something, uh, bringing back Throwback Thursdays. It used to be pretty fun with it, uh, especially when I, was, you know, I had a ton of uh, stuff from like what they considered a junk wax error and on. But I'll, I'll look into it. Um, but that was the final question. So, like I said, if you guys have questions, you email me, text me, or whatever, and I think it's something cool, I'll probably hit you up on Unless I get hit up by a bunch of people, I'm just going to take one person and just ask if I use your name or not. If not, I just put anonymous out there because I think there are some really good questions we had this week, especially if we start off the BGS fakes. You go into breakers taking stuff off the screen. That That's just a no-go across the board. Um, asking, you know, tossing out prices when selling. I mean, it's just because people are inexperienced. They want to flip. They're guessing out there, man. Uh, recommend some good, reliable breakers. I gave you guys some on that that I use. And other than that, Throwback Thursday, I'll look into it. We'll see about it. Other than that, guys, hope you guys have a good week. We'll have a box of Playbook football. My stuff didn't show up in Michigan today, so it probably won't get here till Thursday now once the order goes through. And I don't know what else I'm actually getting this week, too, with it, but we'll at least have a box of Playbook football. We'll open it up and take a look at Some sick stuff comes out of Playbook. Um... Other than that, I will have another video up. I don't know which day. We're going to talk a little bit about PSA grading again. Again. <laughs> but hopefully I answered you guys' questions good. If I didn't, the guys that I did put the questions up here for you, send me up on email, and I'll, if I have to, I'll make a phone call and we'll talk. Because a lot of times, sometimes I have so much stuff in my head, I kind of forget where I'm at and stuff. So... I'll get a better explanation out of there if there's need to be one. Or you could ask me in this video as well, too. But that, you guys have a good, safe week out there. As always, subscribe, like, comment in the video. And I will be back probably either Tuesday or Wednesday to about PSA. All right, guys. Everybody take care. Have a good night.